falling down You pick me up I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me Sing oh, oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night You help me see Sing it out now oh, oh, oh. I just wanna say thank you For the way you love me I wanna say thank you For the way you love me I just wanna say thank you something God has done for you. Hey kids, I want to tell you about an important celebration in my life. I was born really small like a baby squirrel. I weighed two pounds, 14 ounces. Doctors didn't know if I would make it, but I did. What a time to celebrate. That's why when I celebrate my birthday every year, I thank God. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalm 136.1. Hi, I'm Aria, and today we're talking about food. And just talking about food makes me hungry. We have it pretty good. Most of us have enough to eat every day. But for some kids in other parts of the world, food is hard to come by. That takes us to the Philippines. It's a country in Asia Pacific and it's made up of a bunch of islands. A lot of the people there are really hungry, so the Daly family decided to show Jesus love by giving them food and then telling them about God. We'll go into an area and uh, we'll do a weigh-in to determine the, the level of malnutrition with the children. We'll then begin a program, and that program will last about three months, where we'll feed the children five days a week, one meal a day. Along with that, we'll do Bible studies for the kids, and these are fun and exciting Bible studies and, and lessons. 
and the families are truly touched that we not only care about them, but we especially care about the children. And so from that, we've seen uh, churches planted in many areas of this country. Wow, little kids and their parents are coming to know Jesus because the Daly family gave them something to eat. The joy that you see, the smile on the kid's face when they, they get a meal, sometimes it's the only meal that the kids get for um, that day. And so it blesses us knowing that we're able to help them with the nutrition and spiritual aspect of their life. The cool part about this missionary family is that the kids help too. Oh. It's not just Steve and I that's involved in the ministry. We also get Caitlin and Evan involved. They love the children. They love being with them. And so we are called as a family. It's not just the parents out there. It's the children also. Caitlin and Evan are sometimes like the star of the show because they love it to see um, American kids come in and interact with them and have fun with them and play and do puppets and um, to be like them. If there's one thing I know, it's that kids love puppets. Some of the kids have never seen a puppet before and they thought it was real and they always they wanted to come up and touch it and to pet it and feed it. And so they started stuffing cookies in its mouth and stuff. It's so much fun though. I love doing it. I love helping my parents do this work and it's just an awesome experience. Kids getting involved in missions. That's so cool. Maybe you can't live in another country like the Daly family, but you can still pray, give money to missions, and use your talents to reach kids in your own neighborhood. And remember to go 360. Where did it go? someone know how grateful you are, you could give someone a shout out with your hands. <laughs> Woo! You're awesome! You can send an all caps text message. You are awesome! You can use the ancient art of flag semaphore. Go! You! But my favorite way to show gratitude is through song. No matter what you do, I should be thanking you because you make me happy. Uh, 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 uh. I look pretty cool, right? <laughs> let me, let me, let me see that back. No matter what you do, I should be thanking you because you make me happy. Uh, 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 uh. Because you make me. Is that what? Is that what I look like? How embarrassing! Never showing gratitude again. 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 In today's story, we'll hear about a time when King David showed gratitude in a really big way. And he wasn't even a little bit embarrassed. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 12 through 22. After many years of war and uncertainty, David had finally become the king of Israel but something was still missing from the royal city of Jerusalem. The Ark of the Lord belongs here. The Ark was a wooden chest that in some special way carried the presence of God among the Israelites. It had been stolen by the Philistines and then returned, and now it was sitting in the home of a man named Obed-Edom. We'll set up a tent right here for the Ark. Let's go get it. 
David's wife, Michelle, was, um, let's just say, less than enthusiastic. The dust on those back roads takes the curl out of my hair. So David gathered up all his best soldiers and marched over to the place where the Ark rested. This is a wonderful day. An incredible day. An absolutely fantastic day. With great care, the men lifted the heavy Ark with carrying poles. Wonderful. Excellent. Let's go. That's one step closer to Jerusalem. Two. Three. Are you seriously going to count the whole way? Wait. Stop. We've only come six steps. That's okay. We need to thank God for everything he's done. Right then and there, David sacrificed a bull and a calf to honor God. Okay. Now we can move on. One, two, three. Lift. Just walking isn't enough. We should dance for God. The ark's kind of heavy. Everyone else, if you're not carrying the ark, celebrate, sing, shout, blow the trumpets. The people shouted and ran alongside the ark. David danced before the Lord all the way to Jerusalem. As the laughing, shouting parade arrived, Michelle stared in disbelief from a window. There was her husband, the king, dancing in a simple linen garment with all the common people. Unbelievable. He looks ridiculous. Certainly not like a king. Down on the street, David continued to dance all the way to the beautiful tent he had set up. Everybody behind me, let's dance. Okay, keep on moving. Now, let's switch it up. Time for a breather. Let's put the ark right here. One, two, three, down. David made more sacrifices to honor God. Then he stood before the people. The ark has returned. God bless you. He is the one who rules over us all. He deserves our thanks for everything he's done. So let's keep celebrating. We've got some fresh bread and dates and raisin cakes for everyone. Though all of Jerusalem had turned out for the festivities, one person still refused to celebrate. When David returned home, Michal met him furious. You're the king of Israel, and you've really made yourself look good today, right? Dancing around in that thing? A linen apron. It's what the priests wear. But you're a king. You made a fool of yourself in front of all of your officials and even the servants. I did it to honor God. He made me ruler over his people. I can't even. I will celebrate to honor the Lord. You already said that. Oh, I'm not done. I will bring even less honor to myself if it will bring more honor to God. What is that in your beard? Raisins. <laughs> you want to do the electric slide? No. While Michelle cared more about appearances than anything else, David fixed his gaze on God because he knew nothing was more important than celebrating to thank God for all the amazing things he'd done. King David wasn't embarrassed to show how grateful he was to God, and it didn't matter who saw because David knew that honoring God was more important than honoring himself. So he danced! And maybe he sang, You make me feel like the girl. Thank you for being you. You make me feel God had done so much for David, so thanking God must have felt like a party! And maybe he sang, embarrassed. You know why? Because God made the universe. God made you and me. And God made it possible for us to have a relationship with him when he sent Jesus to die for our sins. We should be celebrating with our hands. Woo! With semaphore flags. You are amazing. You are incredible. With singing and dancing and praying, shouting it from the rooftops. We should be celebrating God any way we know how because that's the one thing to remember today. Celebrate what God has done. And if someone asks you why you're celebrating, tell them. Sometimes telling people about God is the best way to show him you're grateful. You make me feel like that again. I want to thank you for being you. You make me feel like that again. It's really, really
Hi guys, this is the review quiz. It, quiz. If you're watching this at home, try to beat your sisters or brothers in this review quiz challenge. What is our big idea today? What has blank what God has done? Celebrate what God has done. Great job, if you got that right. Gratitude is letting others know you blank how they have blank you. Let's see what the answer is. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they have helped you. Did you get that right? If you did, great job. What's the next question? Psalm 136, 1. Why should you thank God? Give thanks to the Lord for blank. All right, let's see what the answer is. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Did you get that right? Great. What did King David do that totally embarrassed his wife? Do you know the answer? He danced for God. Do you think you're going to know what the next answer is? Let's see. What country are we focusing on for missions in November? France, Philadelphia, Photosynthesis, Philippines. Which one do you think? The answer is Phil Philippines. That was a hard one. Great job if you did it. Who won? Were you counting? Well, I'll see you next time. Bye!